Hello and welcome to The Bible Guy. It has been a while since I've done a video. I'll explain some of that in this video because there has been so many things going on. Just so many things, more than I could have imagined. My first two months in the ministry, uh, leading the church here in Belfast, um, and also then being at the World Discipleship Conference in Orlando, and in between that, a holiday a week away with my family, a time over speaking in Glasgow Church, uh, lots of stuff going on. So what I want to do today, and probably for the next 10 videos anyway, is to look at lessons from the World Discipleship Summit, but also maybe just the ministry time that I've had so far. Predominantly lessons from the World Discipleship Summit. And today specifically, it's all about when when things go wrong or when, when everything goes wrong. Uh, maybe that's a bit dramatic, that title, but it, when things go wrong is probably more accurate. When things go wrong. Uh, that's what I want to address and that's partly why there's been a little bit of a gap here um, in terms of putting videos out. But that's what we'll look at today. Lessons from the World Discipleship Summit. When things go wrong, it's going to happen, isn't it? To every one of us, things are going to go wrong. And it's how we respond to them that defines us and defines who we are. It's it's almost the way we're seen by others more than we realize, I think. And, and it really does shape the type of person we become. How do we respond when things go wrong? Well, for me personally, there's a few things to share about leading up to the World Discipleship Summit at an incredibly difficult first month in the ministry. And we actually ended up losing a brother in the church. And prior to that, there was an awful lot of things we needed to deal with prior to his loss and then eventually speaking at his funeral. Uh, it was an incredibly difficult time. Incredibly difficult. And there are many other lessons could come from that. But that was tough. And there was moments when I thought, God, what are you doing here? Why in my first month would I be dealing with all this? How can I focus on my calling and my mission and all these other things if I'm dealing with this? Then I go to the World Discipleship Summit and I just want to share these thoughts for a moment about things that happened on my way to Orlando. So on my way to Orlando, I set up my American Airlines flight, three flights, Belfast to Heathrow, Heathrow to Philadelphia, Philadelphia to Orlando. I go to Belfast Airport nice and early, huge queue in the airport for an Aer Lingus flight to Heathrow. But I go to get my flight to Heathrow and it no longer exists. I had no email to notify me of this. I had no direction from anyone. They just hadn't heard of this flight anymore. And there was no way over. I was going to miss my connecting flights. There was no alternative. British Airways, they were not running an airplane. Um, in the end, I got to use the phone and I ended up ringing in American Airlines and they ended up getting me onto the Aer Lingus flight that was about 35 minutes of a queue behind me, uh, I got on that flight. And that worked okay. But at an hour, an hour on the phone, a bit worried, a bit stressed. On the second flight over, then I realized as I get to America that I've got no phone connection. I can't get onto the Wi-Fi. I can't check into my hotel. I can't phone anyone, and I've got very little battery left, and I haven't brought anything to charge my phone um, in terms of the change in the in American, um, the plugs and so on. And I'm so I realize at this point, this is pretty tough. However, I get into my hotel and the first night we arrive, I got there 11 o'clock at night. I hadn't slept for 24 hours so far. And as I lie down in the bed, I realized that there's a lots of signs and movements in the room. I look down and I realize that the floor is covered in cockroaches. The, they're on the bed, they're on the walls, they're on the floors, they're, they're in my clothing, they're in the shoes. People love this story since I came back. And I'm like, I can't sleep here. I go to get it sorted and then the police are involved downstairs in another altercation, a different situation. So I can't even get my situation resolved. And I decide I need to stay awake tonight and all of the next day tomorrow to try and find another hotel, which I did, which was all okay. But the reason I share this today is how do we respond when things go wrong? How could I respond when things go wrong? I felt a tremendous battle with why are you allowing this God? I remember sitting at the desk about four in the morning and hadn't slept for a long period of time thinking, God, why are you doing this? Why are you letting this happen? 
Surely I'm going to develop a migraine. I haven't slept for so long. I'm a phone's about to run out. I don't know where anybody else is staying. I can't contact them. Um, why? why? Why let all this happen? I'm sure you're sitting there right now. You have things in your own life that you're like, why you let, did you let this happen, God? Well, here's what I ended up doing. And this really, really helped me. I was sitting in the room, cockroaches, the heat, the noisy air conditioning, couldn't sleep, phone problems, dodgy hotel, blah, blah, blah. It's been a tough month before this, really jet lagged as well. Didn't know where I was coming or going. And I remember thinking, Psalm 16 just popped into my head. Psalm 16. I read the Psalm 16 and I, le- I read it. And it says, I mean, you could read the whole Psalm, but first seven and eight here. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. And here was the line. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. And this was the line. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And I sat and I meditated on this idea. The Psalms pour out difficult times in David's life and others' lives. And I thought, with God at my right hand, I will not be shaken. So even though there's troubles going on, even though things haven't worked out, how can I respond? I remember thinking, right. I'm going to get a plan in place. I had a five-point plan that I went out and achieved within between four in the morning and like seven in the morning at that particular night. But I kept it with me. I looked at my right hand and thought, with the Lord at my right hand, I will not be shaken. I might have struggles. I might get a headache. I might be tired. I might struggle with this situation, but I will not be deeply shaken. This is not going to get the better of me because I have the Lord at my right hand. And I meditated on that verse all through the night and into the rest of the week as I went about my business in Orlando. That was the first lesson for me, Simon. How do you deal with difficulty when things go wrong? Don't just always assume that God is allowing something to happen because he doesn't care or he's not got the power to deal with it. There's something else maybe going on, but he's also testing you to see, will you hold on to God? And in this case, God is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I want to bring that with me in dealing with whatever I deal with in the upcoming weeks and months and years. Here's a little tip on the basis of that that I heard a while ago that I tried to implement in line with what I've just shared. And it was this. When things are going wrong, which they will, maybe today, tomorrow, they are going to go wrong at times. Instead of saying, why is God allowing this? Asked. God has allowed it, of course. What is God teaching me through this? So instead of why has God allowed this, what is God teaching me through this? That's what I ask. That's a different question than why is he allowing this? One's presumptuous. The other one's more, um, you know, you're trying to gather what could the possible learning point be for me here. And for me, Simon, you lean on yourself too much. You lean on your own strengths With me at your right hand, you will not be shaken. But you need me, not yourself. So all of this helped to remind me, God is what I need. I can't do this on my own. He's going to throw things into the mix in order to get my attention to make me realize I need him. The Lord is my right hand. I will not be shaken. So this is the first lessons from the WDS when things go wrong. I hope you enjoyed this today. Please hit the like button if you did. Please share this on for other people. And as always, please subscribe to that Bible guy. Let's get his word out there.